I have seen gods fly. I've seen men build weapons that I couldn't even imagine. Uh-huh. I've seen aliens drop from the sky. Yeah. But I have never seen anything like this. How much more are you hiding? Hold up. Let's go. 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 My son, it is your time. Show me my respect and bow down. You get to decide what kind of king you are going to be. Don't freeze. I never freeze. The revolution will not be televised. Show me my respect. And bow down. We own ya. We own ya. We only getting started now. Cause we own ya. Everybody think they know me now. Cause we own ya. You and I'm my homie now. Cause we own ya. I waited my entire life for this. The world's gonna start over. I'ma burn it all. What happens now determines what happens to the rest of the world. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. What kind of forever? The revolution will not be televised. Let's have some fun. The revolution. Hey everybody, the revolution will not be televised. There's a new surprise Black Panther trailer. Let's break it down. There's a new round of that Thor ticket giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. This mostly hyping up some of the new technology. We get a much better look at his energy costume, which is just a little more form fitting. It's like Iron Man going from the Mark I, which is like really bulky, down to one of his more modular suits, which is even more powerful because he finds a better energy source. And if you couldn't tell, part of this costume actually forms around him. This is what it looks like in the comics. So it's sort of him doing the Tony Stark thing where you wear pieces of a costume and the full costume just emerges from that. I'm expecting the same thing to happen with this Iron Spider suit. Like Peter wears part of it and then the helmet will just form around him automatically. So you have to imagine that Black Panther can sort of outdo Tony Stark at his own game because his little sister, Shuri, is one of their leading scientists. So she's sort of like the Peter Parker science bro in training of this part of the world, only a little bit more advanced. She's just been at it a little bit longer than Peter Parker's been at it. You have to imagine she's a couple years older than him. Peter Parker in high school, she's somewhere around college age, like somewhere around her early 20s. But the other thing about this, too, is that they explain a little bit about how they hide Wakanda from the rest of the world, too. You see this giant energy dome that sort of cloaks it and makes it look like just a normal part of the terrain. So you look at Everett Ross and he's like, what else are you hiding from me? So the really cool thing that they've revealed is, is what's going on with the villains. So Killmonger has his own agenda and his own golden version of the Black Panther suit, which is pretty freaking crazy. The really cool thing about the costumes are this actually looks like the Marvel Knights version of the Black Panther costume, but they both have a bit of gold on it. So I think that's really what they're going for with Black Panther's second costume that he wears. And I'm assuming that he enters Infinity War wearing this and then like Tony Stark gets an upgrade in every single movie, he'll also get some costume upgrades when we get to Infinity War. And Claw has his own agenda, but they've aligned just because they can help each other out. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. But it's not like Killmonger really likes Ulysses Claw. He's still viewed as an outsider, but in the great way that Andy Serkis does, he tried to explain his villain. Like all great movie villains, they don't think of themselves as villains. So he wants to expose what he sees as the hypocrisy of Wakanda, which sounds like something a villain would say. Like, you know Black Panther from the comics. He's a good character. He funds Captain Marvel's ultimates. He works with the Avengers to save the world. 
But like Killmonger says, he wants to burn everything down and change the world. So obviously things have gone to shit. And because of their vibranium, they can be the world power that he wants them to be. But I think on a fundamental level, Black Panther understands that if everybody around the world, the good people and the bad people, were to get their hands on their vibranium, it would just end terribly for everyone. It would wind up looking like this scene from Tony Stark's Nightmare in Avengers Age of Ultron before Thanos even got here. So what I'm actually really hoping for, I talked about this in my Infinity War video that I posted last night about everybody's upgrades, is that Shuri actually helps Tony Stark out a little bit and they integrate some of Black Panther's technology into his designs too. But that's a little further off. And even Black Panther in the comics doesn't like to share a lot of this technology. Like he's still very mistrustful of the other Avengers because of Tony Stark's history as a weapons manufacturer. But the big fight that they're hyping up in this, when Killmonger sort of sheds his clothing and his Black Panther costume manifests, is that they're fighting for the leadership of Wakanda because he hasn't officially become king yet, even though he has his father's ring. You have to remember that Wakanda is a big place with several cities. The one that we see them traveling to at the beginning of the trailer is just the main city where the royal palace is. There are several other tribes. This green person, as well as Man-Ape, who you see right here, they're the leaders of some of the other biggest tribes. So the whole idea here is, is that the kingdom might wind up turning against Black Panther if he makes a bad move. So that is what provides Killmonger's opportunity. So it's not like Black Panther has this stranglehold on the kingdom and everybody loves him. There's a growing population of Wakandas that are very dissatisfied with what's going on inside the kingdom. So trouble from within and trouble from outside with people like Ulysses Claw. But just starting at the beginning of the trailer, going through the rest of this stuff, Denai Guerrera is sort of the leader of the Dora Milaje. The way that movies work, I wouldn't be surprised if they develop some sort of ship between her and Black Panther. He has a couple of people that he falls in love with in the comics, but because they can't do Storm, I don't think they're going to try and do that. But you can always hope for that X-Men crossover. This is Ramonda, his stepmother. She's Shuri's natural-born mother. So remember, Black Panther's father was king for a long time. His first wife, who was Black Panther's mother, died. He remarried Ramonda. They had Shuri, so Shuri's only his half-sister. But you can see that he's still very close to her. Like they have that awesome handshake and she shows him that really cool new Black Panther suit. These are the Warrior Falls. This is where they have rites of passage. So this is where Killmonger makes his initial challenge to him. And then it sort of spills over into this area over here. The other really cool thing about this is that they walk around a lot of the different parts of the city. So you just get a much better look for what everything is like. They have that really cool scene where he drops out of the plane and uses those special energy spheres to stop his kinetic energy. So yeah, it just looks really badass, but they halt his descent. They actually do serve a really important purpose. So you could jump out of an airplane and they would stop you from going splat on the ground. So he doesn't need to use a parachute like normal people would. And he doesn't have repulsors like Tony Stark. So this scene right here actually looks like it's from a different part of the trailer and they've just cut it in a misleading way. So like he's wearing his old Civil War Black Panther suit, but in the big car chase, he's wearing the new suit. So this is probably from that other beginning part of the trailer where he's taking down the people in the jungle. This is also probably one of the coolest parts of the trailer that we haven't seen before. So he's looking at all of these panther spirits in the tree here. This is sort of their version of the afterlife. It's sort of this limbo state where he'll probably get to talk to his father in spirit form. So like they said, death is more of a jumping off point. They'll probably explain that in this movie. And I am curious how they're going to tie some of these concepts to Infinity War because there are some things that we could talk about when it comes to Infinity Gems, but we'll have to wait for that till after Thor Ragnarok comes out. So I'll explain that at the end of the video a little bit. But in the comics, there is an actual panther god from which he derives his powers. He has a special connection to it, but there's also the heart-shaped herb. So they'll probably explain both of those things and how they work together to make him the Black Panther. So like Killmonger can wear a Black Panther costume. He has the same enhanced strength that Black Panther does, but he doesn't have the connection to the panther god. So there are all these things that work together to give him his abilities. There's technology, there's this special chemical compound in the herbs that he eats, and then there's the spiritual aspect to it. Shuri driving what looks like a really badass vibranium enhanced car. This actually looks like a normal car that she's doing something to with her technology. 
it actually looks like they're fighting inside the vibranium mines of Wakanda. Like you can see the mineral deposits behind them. So obviously it's a really big place. We're going to see every last bit of it. So this is probably going to be one of the final big fights of the movie. The other thing you'll notice about this is that Claw actually gets his arm cannon that he has from the comics. But it's Inspector Gadget style. Like it's a normal hand that just pops out and turns into a weapon. So there's a lot of stuff in this trailer that it looks like it just took them a while to finish the CG on. But remember the Black Panther's coming out in February and Black History Month. So there will be more trailers with even more cool stuff. So what's going to happen next is, is my non-spoilery Thor Ragnarok review will post on Thursday. No spoilers, so don't worry about that. I have some new flash coming later tonight. I'll say congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, Angel Chavez. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. Click here to watch all the Avengers get their hardcore armor upgrades before Infinity War. And you can click here for that new Mutants trailer again. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.